How's it going everyone? In this video, we are going to prove Euler's identity. e to the power of i pi plus 1 equals 0. This is one of the most famous equations in mathematics, and there's a story that when Euler came up with it, he said that he felt like he was talking to God, because this identity connects five fundamental constants of mathematics, all in one formula. e, i, as in the square root of negative 1, pi, 1, and 0. So, how it's derived is from Euler's formula. e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. But that's not enough of an answer because we need to know where exactly this formula comes from. And we are going to derive this formula right now. But first, let's just show how it gives us Euler's identity. So if you plug in pi for theta, then you get Euler's identity. e to the i pi equals cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Well, the sine of pi is 0. So that term cancels out, and we just get e to the power of i pi equals, well, the cosine of pi is negative 1. And sometimes Euler's identity is presented in this way, right? But if you bring the negative 1 to the other side, you get e to the power of i pi plus 1 equals 0. And this, I believe, is the more elegant form because it has those five fundamental mathematical constants. But as mentioned, that's not the full story because the real question is where does this formula come from called Euler's formula? And it's actually a very elegant proof. Consider a function of theta equal to cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta divided by e to the power of i theta. Now, we could rewrite this function as the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta multiplied by e to the power of negative i theta. And let's see what happens when we take the derivative of this function with respect to theta. So, we have the derivative of the first part of it, cos theta plus i sine theta. And that gives us negative sine theta plus i cos theta. And that's multiplied by the second part of the function plus the derivative of the second part of the function. which would be negative i e to the power of negative i theta multiplied by the first part of the function, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Okay. Now, let's simplify this. Okay. So, we have e to the negative i theta, which can be factored out. e to the negative i theta. And then what's left? Negative sine theta plus i cosine of theta. And then this negative i here multiplies into those brackets. So we have negative i cosine of theta. And then we have negative i times i times the sine of theta. 
Well, notice that we have I cos theta minus I cos theta. That cancels out. And notice that I times I here is negative 1, which multiplied by this negative 1 will turn it into a positive 1. So, simplifying further gives us e to the power of negative I theta times negative sine theta plus sine theta. Well, that cancels out as well, which means we're multiplying by 0, so the derivative of that function is 0. And if the derivative is 0, it means the function is a constant. So, we know that f is a constant. Okay, let's recall again what f is. f at theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta divided by e to the power of i theta. And we've determined that that equals some constant. Let's call it c. Well, to find out what that constant is, we just have to plug in anything for theta and see what the result is. So let's go with the easiest value, theta equals 0. So f at 0 equals the cosine of 0 plus i times the sine of 0 divided by e to the power of i times 0. Well, the sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. And e to the power of 0, because we have i times 0, well, that's anything to the power of 0, is 1. So this equals 1. Okay. So if our function is a constant, and at some point that function equals 1, well, that means it always equals 1. Okay. So we can therefore conclude that 1 equals cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta divided by e to the power of i theta. If we multiply both sides of the equation by e to the power of i theta, we have e to the power of i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. From there, we have Euler's formula. And then plugging in pi for theta, as shown above, our sine term cancels out because the sine of theta is 0. So we have e to the i pi, the sine of pi is 0, right? And the sine, uh, the cosine of pi is negative 1. That's one form of the identity. And again, bringing negative 1 to the other side, e to the power of i pi plus 1 equals 0. And that is the derivation of Euler's formula and Euler's identity. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.